So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about squirting. <laughs> this is probably my favorite orgasm and I get asked so many questions about squirting. It's probably my most requested video till this day. And a while back, I actually, on my Instagram story, asked all of you guys what questions you have about squirting. And I got a lot of really, really, really good questions. And I wrote um, some of them down and I'm going to be going through it in kind of a Q&A style video. And yeah, I hope that all of my different tips and tricks can help you guys to also experience your first squirting orgasm or to gift your partner a squirting orgasm. So the first question, doo -doo -doo -doo, where does squirting come from? It's a really, really good question. So squirting uh, technically comes out of the urethra, so it's like the same tube you pee out of, but the liquid is generated from the skein's gland, which is located in the urethral sponge. And if you imagine that this is your urethral opening, uh, this is your vaginal canal and vaginal opening, and then here would be your anal sphincter. The urethral sponge is kind of like a cylinder-like tissue which runs all across the urethra. So the easiest way to stimulate it, because obviously we can't go inside our urethra to stimulate it, is to go to the upper wall of our vaginal canal. So the wall closest to your belly button and the front side of your body. And this is also the area where the G-spot and the A-spot is located and during penetration or fingering or self-pleasuring or playing with different kind of toys when this area gets stimulated this um, upper wall of the vagina so indirectly stimulating the urethral sponge all of the glands inside of the urethral sponge including the skein's gland start to secrete lubrication and liquids that go both through the membrane into the urethra and also inside of the vagina and then either at the moment of orgasm when the pelvic floor muscles contract and release or if there's just a moment of profound relaxation and kind of release of the pelvic floor muscles all of the liquids which accumulated in the urethra get expelled outwards and this is known as the squirting phenomenon now that's why most people probably assume that it must be pee which is actually the second question is squirting the same as peeing which is such a common question and I understand why because it comes out of the same hole that you pee out of but um, the liquid is very different than urine for those of you who've experienced squirting I'm sure you can relate it's very clear it's odorless it doesn't have a very strong taste either but sometimes there can be remnants of urine in it because it is coming from the urethra but when studies um, researchers have studied this liquid they found that there is a substance called PSA in the liquid which is basically the equivalent of the male prostate fluid in women so through kind of correlation they concluded that the skein's gland which is in the urethral sponge is kind of the equivalent of the female prostate and when it's being stimulating stimulated it secretes um, different kind of lubrication which in the moment of orgasm or in a moment of release get expelled outwards so this is where squirting is coming from Can everyone learn how to squirt? So this is a bit of a controversial question because basically we don't know and there's different opinions out there. I personally believe that every woman has the capacity to squirt simply because I've seen it happen so many times with different female clients of mine who were convinced that they were one of those women who simply can't squirt. And through the different techniques that I showed them, so many of them actually did manage to open up into squirting. Now, more importantly than that, squirting is not always associated with orgasm, although it can be. So I definitely think that every single woman can have a G-spot or an A-spot orgasm, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it will always be accompanied by squirting. So long story short is that I can't say for sure, but there's no evidence to prove that some women can't. So I really think it's more about having access to the right techniques and discovering your body and how to kind of play this magical instrument and just seeing how to awaken those juices in your own body. Next question, which technique leads to squirting? 
Very good question. So there's two techniques which are my go-to for squirting and I think most people's go-to. Um, one of them is the famous come here movement. So this is when you have your fingers inside of you and you kind of do this come here motion on the upper wall of your vagina and it gently caresses the G-spot and A-spot, which is where the urethral sponge is located. And the second technique, which is my personal favorite one, is a suction technique. So instead of just creating the movement from your knuckles and your fingers, the suction movement actually comes from your entire arm. So in the exact same location with your fingers all the way inserted inside on the upper wall, you kind of like move your whole arm up and down. And what you're looking for is to, you wanna make sure you have some oil on your fingers. And the upper wall will probably be a bit lubricated because it's full, full of glands. And you wanna kind of like, like kind of break the suction and then bring it back. Break the suction and then bring it back. And when you're doing it right, the sound is pretty loud. Like if someone was sitting across the room, they should be able to hear me <laughs> do this. So that's a good thing to look out for if you hear this kind of like, kind of sound. And those are the two main techniques. Now, what's gonna happen probably at some point is that you're gonna feel like you need to pee, which is very normal because one, you're putting pressure on your urethra and two, all of these glands are secreting lubrication into your urethra, which will create a feeling of needing to pee because there's liquid inside of your urethra. So it's very common for that to start pretty early on and just keep on doing whatever you're doing and keep on breathing and building up arousal. And then at some point, usually what women report is that they feel like kind of like getting very close to this point of no return where the peeing sensation gets really, really, really intense and you kind of feel like, oh my God, I'm really going to pee now. There's no more going back. I'm really going to pee you want to savor that moment and when that moment comes you actually want to speed up and intensify whatever movement you were doing a little bit and you kind of want to push down with your pelvic floor muscles by push down i mean release so as if you're actually trying to pee and don't do it the whole time so first you just build up build up build up and only do that when you feel like you're really at this point of like oh god oh yes yes Yes! 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 Then go faster and kind of release down. And this is usually the gateway into squirting orgasms. Next question. I heard that in Tantra they drink the liquid. Is that true? Well, yeah, in certain Tantric schools or sacred sexuality schools, they do encourage women to drink um, the liquid that comes out during squirting because it's considered a very, very potent elixir. So it's sometimes called Amrita or elixir of youth or the nectar of the gods. So in certain sacred sexual traditions, there was an emphasis on doing special rituals with that liquid. So for example, um, bathing yourself in it or drinking it or putting it on your face or offering it back to the earth, which is a really beautiful way to reconnect to your sexuality and your bodily fluids because most of us have been conditioned to like think it's disgusting and we don't want to touch it and we need to clean it right away and we need to put a lot of towels but actually doing different rituals with this liquid can be a very very healing process and really allow you to reconnect to the sacredness of your sexuality so yes in certain schools that is something which is practiced I squirt a lot and I'm embarrassed by it and disgusted how do I bring it up with my partners yeah, so first of all, chances are your partners are going to love it. I hear this a lot from women that they're ashamed and embarrassed that they're squirting quite a lot and they feel like they're going to wet the bed and their partners are going to be disgusted by them. But squirting, I think, on porn is like one of the most searched words. And for men, it's actually most of the time a huge turn on to see a woman go through this kind of orgasm and squirt all over him if that's the case um so first of all just like knowing that for most men it's actually a huge huge turn on and not something that they're disgusted by and secondly 
you can't just bring it up with your partners and just say that like, hey, I have a tendency to squirt a lot. It makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, maybe together you can prepare, you can have different towels, you can have sex in the shower, in the bathtub, do different things to get you feeling more comfortable. But eventually as you go deeper with your partner, I would honor it and celebrate it and know that so many women are dying to have that kind of experience and it can feel so releasing and so just sexy to be able to feel your juices dripping down your thighs and to be able to share that experience with your partner. So I would slowly build up to it, but definitely learning to, to celebrate it and see that as a beautiful gift that you have in your sexuality. Does squirting come from the urethra or the vaginal opening? I already explained that it's coming mainly from the urethra, although sometimes there is also uh, all the different secretions that were secreted in the vaginal canal and the moment of orgasm can also secrete a little bit. But the famous like squirting across the room scenario is usually coming from the urethra. Are squirting and the G-spot orgasm the same? Mm, no, they're not, but they can happen simultaneously. So as I said, the urethral sponge is also the same location as the G-spot and the A-spot. So the G-spot is a little bit more shallow, closer to the entrance, like a rubbery type of texture. And if you go a little bit deeper, you'll feel the A-spot, which feels a little bit more smooth. So it's very possible to have a G-spot orgasm without squirting. You can have a G-spot orgasm with squirting, and you can even squirt without having an orgasm. And there's no research to, to show why that's happening. It's happened to me, all three of those, and I don't really know why it happens in one way or another. So they can definitely be related, but you can also, I know women who have G-spot orgasms regularly and don't usually squirt with them. I know women who always squirt with their G-spot orgasms, and I know women who once in a while squirt without even having an orgasm yet. Uh, any advice on how to squirt? So I think the main advice I would say is that squirting is a lot about letting go, surrendering, and releasing. Because if you have any kind of shame or fear that you're going to wet the bed or any kind of holding, you're not going to squirt. Because in that moment of intensity, when everything feels really overwhelming and you're really in this peak of arousal, in that moment, you need to let your mind go and just surrender and release. And this is the gateway that will take the intensity into bliss, pleasure, and orgasm.